الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين شفيع المذنبين رحمة للعالمين سيدنا ونبينا وشفيع ذنوبنا وهبيب قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا الذي سمي في السماء بأحمد وفي الأرضين بأبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وبآله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين صلوات الله عليهم أجمعين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم ومنكر فضائلهم وغاصب حقوقهم من الأولين والآخرين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه المجيد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فأما الإنسان إذا ما ابتلاه ربه فأكرمه ونعمه فيقول ربي أكرما وأما إذا ما ابتلاه فقد عليه رزقا فيقول ربي أهانا أمنا بالله وصدق الله العلي العظيم صل على محمد وآل محمد In Surah Fajr, which is the 89th chapter of Quran Majid, verse number 15 and 16, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the state of insan, the state of man, how this man is. Allah says that, that and as for man, when he is in a smooth phase, when we honor him, and when we bless him with our bounties and our blessings, he is happy. He says that Allah has honored me. Uh, he says that Allah has ikram, means Allah has honored me. Fayaqulu rabbi akraman. And Allah has honored me. And then Allah says that when we give him another state, because see, human will go through different kind of phases. Yeah? Kabi khushi kabi gum. That's what they say. It's not always you'll be happy. This is world. There'll be a time where you have to go through different phases of life. Sometimes you'll be happy. Sometimes you'll be sad. Sometimes you'll be gr you'll be grieved. And Allah says that wa amma idha mabtalahu fakadara alayhi rizka. And when we straighten his means of subsistence, fayakulu rabbi ahanan. Then he will say that my Lord has disgraced me. Now in the in the tafsir of these verses, in tafsir al Namuna, Ayatullah Makari Shirazi says that in both states, our marajas are saying that in both states, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tests his his slave. He tests us in both states, whether we are in a smooth state or we are in, in problems. Yeah, everybody has got problems. Yeah? But in any case, Allah tests us. That is why Dawood was told that, oh Dawood, when you are happy, even in that, in that phase of your life, remember me. Do not remember me only when you are sad. When you are happy, also remember me. When you are happy and when you remember me, when you are happy, when you are sad, I'll reach faster to you. Because one of the uh, quality or the attribute of the true servant of Allah, according to our eighth holy Imam, is wa itu shakaru. Whenever he is blessed, the bounties from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, he is grateful. He is grateful to his Lord. Now, it is said that, it is said that, uh, please recite a salawat. <clears throat> For someone who possesses intellect, he will, in, the, in, in problems, he will be forbearing, he'll be patient. And when he is patient, what will happen is that he, is, he will be esteemed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he strengthens his iman. And it is said that a, such a person will combat the misfortunes successfully. 
That is why the Holy Prophet of Islam is quoted to have said that a, for a mu'min, when he is tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that, that kind of a test, that kind, when he faces a misfortune, for a mu'min, it's not a misfortune. For a mu'min, it is a test and trial. But for an oppressor, it is a chastisement. See, there are some people, uh, when they faced different phases of life, or let's say, when they were tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with misfortunes, you will find that in every state, they were thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is hard. For me to say is very easy. For you to listen right now is also easy. But to go through is extremely hard. It is said, now before I say this story, I would like to mention to you a hadith or an incident of our fourth holy imam. It is said that our fourth holy imam once asked one of the companions that what do you prefer? Do you prefer health or sickness? Uh, or do you prefer poverty or richness? Or do you prefer death or life? So that companion, he says the other way around. He says, he says all those things which a person would not prefer. Why? He thought that perhaps the fourth imam will be happy with him. Yeah, but this is not the case. Yeah, like it is said that when, uh, uh, I had, when I was learning driving, my instructor had told me that when uh, one of the students, when he was going, when he was giving a test, he says that while I was, well, while that person was giving a test, he saw some people crossing. He wanted people wanted to cross. Now, according to the law, according to the driving law. You are not allowed to wave anybody or to give them way. What we do right now, it's, it's, it's against the law. He says, I gave him, I gave, I gave, the student gave the way to the, to, the, to the pedestrians so that they should pass. The time he, gave, he, 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 he signaled to, to those pedestrians, the examiner marked him failed. It was a major mistake. While the time came to give the debrief, and the student was amazed. I did everything perfect. What is my, my major mistake? The student was told that you are not allowed to, to do actions. Why did you signal? That is against the law. Now, my instructor says that I was seated behind. I posed a question to my student. The instructor will always warn that his student should pass. He says, I asked my student that why, why did you give them? Why did you signal? He says, my student replied, I thought that he will think <laughs> he will think that I'm good enough, that I wanted to be good in the eyes of the, of the examiner. So that the examiner will think that he's very good, uh, he'll make me pass. But this is not the way. Yeah, it was against the law. The examiner also looks what the law says. Same applies to this companion. This companion thought that I will be good in the eyes of our fourth holy imam. He says that, Yabna Rasulullah, I prefer death. Uh, uh, instead of life. I prefer sickness. He thought that he'll be good in the eyes of Imam uh, uh, in, instead of uh, health. And I prefer poverty instead of richness. Imam Sajjad replies, with us Ahlul Bayt, we prefer that thing what Allah desires for us. Whatever Allah wills for us, we prefer that. wa tasliman li amre. We are pleased with whatever Allah is pleased with us. That's what Imam Hussain said. With us, Ahlul Bayt. If Allah wills for us sickness, we are happy even if we are sick. If Allah wills for us to be in poverty and we are poor, we are happy. And if Allah desires for us death, we are happy. Many people today ask that Imam Hussain knew, why did he go to Karbala? Imam Kazim knew, why did he have that poison? And so on and so forth. So many questions come up. But they are forgetting the concept of qadha o qadr. Qadha o qadr itself, destiny and decree. That's what when we greet our eighth holy imam, we salute him. What do we say? As-salamu alayka ya gharib al-ghuraba, sultana bil hasan, Ali ibn Musa al-ridha, al-radhi bil qadr wal qadha. Which means that they are happy, all of all this Ahlul Bayt, they are happy with the, desti the, with the destiny and decree, what Allah has decreed for them. So this is a lesson for us. It is said that there was a very patient person long ago. 
uh, on the, imagine he was he was tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in such a way with sickness because everybody's test comes in a different way there are some people they are tested it's a misfortune according to us but such people who are believers they don't take it as misfortunes they take you see how they take this person imagine that what he was going through it was a sickness which is called dropsy now dropsy is a, such a bad sickness that a person feels extremely thirsty and then he drinks water at the amount of inordinate amount the quantity of water which he has is inordinate it's not ordinary amount after having so much water the belly the tummy swells to that extent that a person cannot walk cannot stand cannot sit he only sleeps this person's name was Imran so he he he, he was just sleeping he laid he laying on his tummy that's how he slept to that ex for 30 years and all there was no remedy for this disease there was no remedy for him every remedy proved unproductive yeah, nothing helped him now when his brother known as Allah comes to visit him when he pays him a visit when he sees a brother in this state because he was blood related to him he was his own brother yeah he saw his brother in a pathetic condition he could not bear he burst into tears whoever visits his brother in that manner uh, he started weeping he wept so much he burst into tears he says and the brother is asking now Imran asks his brother what makes you weep he says that I can see you in this position I can't bear see the passions of Imran who is going through this problem he doesn't look he doesn't take it as a misfortune he says he says to his brother that do not worry about me I'm happy and I shall I disclose my secret to you but do not divulge it to anybody as far as I am alive until I die then you can disclose the secret he says what do you want to tell me he says right now I'm in, in I'm in such a good condition I'm happy because see because he was sleeping they made his resting place near a ditch uh, near a pit they had dug a pit for him that was his resting place where he was resting the place where he was resting besides the that place they dug a pit and that was a place where he would excrete and he would urinate he would relieve himself there so he says but for me here is a good place I'm enjoying because I can meet the angels the angels are coming they are greeting me and I'm replying them I'm enjoying that state what Allah has desired for me they are greeting me I'm replying and I'm enjoying intimacy with the angels he says this is my state do not divulge to anybody until I die so can you imagine see this for us when we read or when we hear we think that it is a misfortune but those people when they stand they combat successfully with this kind of problems they strengthen their iman and this is for us also that we 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 are supposed to change a rough situation into a good situation take example of our seventh holy imam whose death anniversary will be soon we shall be commemorating his death anniversary in this holy month of rajab 25th of rajab he passed away our seventh holy imam imam musa ibn jafar al qadim salawatullahi salam alayhi imagine our seventh holy imam he is one of the imams from the imams from the list of them from the series of the imams he was uh, as he was imprisoned for very long period of time but when he reaches in the prison imam kadhim alayhi salam says to allah see, he, he doesn't take it as a misfortune he says that oh allah i was looking for a time that i should be alone so that i can do munajat with you and this is the best time that no one disturbs me he doesn't look it at as a, as a misfortune he says that alhamdulillah i'm happy wherever you have kept me i can pray 
I can do my amal and I can remember you. Because we insan, we human, according to Quran, Quran says that insan is created in a, he's, he's created very weak. Khulikal insanu dha'ifa. He's very weak. He screams. Innal insana khulika halu'a. He's created in a hasty temperament. Itha masahu sharru jazu'a. Being greatly grieved when evil afflicts him. Wa itha masahu khayru manu'a. The same man, uh, when, when good comes across him, he becomes miser and stingy. So, in, in, in every kind of situation, wherever in all phases we are, whether it is rough or smooth situation, this is a test. And when a misfortune comes to us, Imam Ali salam says that when you are in a problem, do not, do, uh, do not make a who and cry. Do not weep. Face it. Combat it successfully. Uh, Allah will make an ease for you. It will be easy for you. Do not cry. Do not weep. Make it easy. Yourself, if you make it easy, it will be easy. Do not look as a misfortune, as a, as a great misfortune. Take example of Nabi Hud, and then I come to Urdu and I end up. Nabi Hud, alayhi salam, there are some prophets mentioned in Quran, uh, their wives were not good, good women. Like Nabi, Hu, Nabi Nuh, alayhi salam, Nabi Lut, alayhi salam, Quran has mentioned, Nabi Lut. Nabi Hud, Nabi Hud, his wife was not a good woman. Yeah? A group of people, they come to meet Nabi Hud, and she opens the door. When she opens the door, they said that, where is Hud? Where is Nabi Allah? We want to meet him. We have come specially to meet him so that he prays for us. In our town, the, we are, we are uh, afflicted with uh, famine. There's no rains completely. We want him to pray for us. So the, the, the wife, she remarks. She says that if his dua was accepted, then he would have prayed for himself. Now the billah. He says that this Hud himself, his crops are withered. He will pray for your crops. It is like when a person gives you a medicine. He says, this is an oil. Apply on your head. If you are bald, hair will grow. While himself is bald. Himself is bald, but he gives you an oil. He says, you apply it on your head, it will grow hair. Her himself is bald. So she was trying to say the same thing. She says that you want to tell who that he should pray for you? Uh, himself, his crops are being withered in his farm. They said, okay, at least you inform us his whereabouts. Where is he right now? So she says that he's in the farm. He's busy farming. And she gives the address. They go to the farm of Hood. Hood was busy plowing and farming, doing his work in the farm. When they see Hood, salam, they said to Hood, but they forgot to tell what the wife said initially. So Hood says, I'll pray for you right now. Hood prays for them. He, he raises his hands towards the heavens. He prays for them, and he says, right now, Hood says, Nabi Hood says, it is raining in your town. Go right now, and your, your problem is solved. While they were leaving the farm of Hood, they remembered. They said, but Hood, that woman who was at your home, she uttered this statement, that if his dua was being accepted, then he would have prayed for himself. Hood said, that that is my wife. Allah has not created a mu'min, but with a test for a mu'min. Every mu'min has got a test. We take it as misfortune. Who takes it as a test? He says, Allah has not created a mu'min, but besides a mu'min, there is a test. That, was, that is my test. Then he says, I'm praying for my wife. May Allah grant her long life, because she is a means of test for me. Who says, may Allah grant her long life. Then Hood says, he says that I'm praying for her. He says, she's, uh, and the, please recite a salawat. <clears throat> he continues, he says, but I'm lucky in one way that I'm her master, she is not my master. My enemy uh, is, my enemy is such that I'm her master. I still thank Allah that I've not got an enemy who is my master. Hood says, it's a point to be noted. Sometimes you could have an enemy who is your master. That becomes more hard. It becomes more difficult. Muhammad 
تو خداوند کریم کیا کہتا ہے قرآن میں کہ انسان سورہ فجر میں کہ جب انسان کی سیچویشن اچھی ہوتی ہے تو وہ خوش ہوتا ہے لیکن جب بھی ہم ان کو آزماتے ہیں تو پھر انسان چیختا ہے وہ مصیبت کو مصیبت سمجھتا ہے پھر قرآن کہتا ہے کل بل تکریمون الیتیم ولا تحاون علا تو عامل مسکین قرآن کہتا ہے کہ نہیں کل ہرگز بل تکریمون الیتیم تم نے تو کبھی بھی یتیم کو ایتام کو تم نے کبھی بھی اکرام نہیں کیا تم نے یتیم کی عزت نہیں کی پتہ یہ چلا کہ اگر ہم چاہتے ہیں کہ ہمیں پریشانی نہ آئے تو یتیم کی عزت کرو اور ولا تحاظون علا تعام المسکین تم نے تو کسی کو انکریج بھی نہیں کیا کہ مسکینوں کو کھلائے ارج بھی نہیں کیا تم نے کسی کو انکریج نہیں کیا کہ مسکینوں کو کھلاو تم نے کسی کو نصیحت نہیں دی کہ مسکینوں کو کھلاو ہمارے چھٹے سرکار امام جعفر بن محمد صادق صلوات اللہ علیہ وسلم علیہ فرماتے ہیں کہ کوئی بھی انسان اس دنیا میں دست شفقت اگر پھیرے گا یتیم کے اوپر تو جتنے بال آتے ہیں نا مومن کے ہاتھ میں مومن کے ہاتھ میں وہ جب دست شفقت پھیرتا ہے یتیم کے سر پر جتنے بھی بال آتے ہیں یتیم کے ان کے ہاتھ پہ اسی تعداد کے نور خداوند کریم ان کو بخشے گا قیامت کے دن یعنی وہ مومن نور علا نور ہو جائے گا اگر انسان ایک دست شفقت پھیرتا ہے یتیم کے اوپر دیکھو اسلام نے اہل البیت نے یتیم کے بارے میں کیا کچھ نہیں کہا کیا کچھ ہمیں نہیں سمجھایا گیا یتیم کے بارے میں لیکن یہی امت تھی جنہوں نے رسول کی نواسی کی عزت نہیں کی رسول کی رسول یعنی امام زہرہ کی نواسی کی عزت نہیں کی رسول زہرہ کی نواسی کی عزت نہیں کی ان کو اکرام نہیں کیا گیا اور یہی امام حسین بھی تھے کہ امام حسین اہل البیت جب کچھ بولتے ہیں تو عملن بھی سکھاتے ہیں اور سمجھاتے ہیں یہ تو اماسوم کی حدیث تھی کہ یتیم کے اوپر دست شفقت پھیرنا امام حسین علیہ السلام جب انہوں نے مدینہ چھوڑا اور اس کے بعد مدینہ کے بعد جب وہ کوفہ جانے سے پہلے جب راستے میں تھے تو راستے میں جب خبر ملی کہ مسلم ابن عقیل کی شہادت ہو گئی اس کے بعد امام حسین نے سوچا کہ اب مسلم کی زوجہ کو خبر دی جائے کہ وہ بیوہ ہو گئی ہے اور مسلم کے بچے یتیم ہو گئے ہیں تو ایک مرتبہ امام حسین نے زینب قبرہ سے کہا کہ اے بہن کافلہ کو کافلے کو روکا جائے ایک مقام پر اب ہم چلو میرے ساتھ میں اکیلا نہیں جاؤں گا چلو میرے ساتھ مسلم کی بیوہ کے پاس اور مسلم کی بیوہ کو ایک خبر دے کہ وہ بیوہ ہو گئی ہے مسلم کو شہید کیا گیا ہے کوفے میں اتنے میں حاض دارو کہا جاتا ہے یہ لکھا گیا ہے کہ امام حسین نے اوپنلی نہیں کہا اسی وقت مستقیمن نہیں کہا کہ تم یتیم ہو گئی اوہ رکیاد امام حسین نے کہا کہ اے بیٹا آؤ امام نے رکیہ کو اپنے گھود میں رکھا اور رکیہ کے سر پر دست شفقت پھیرا ایک مرتبہ اہل البیت کے گھرانے کی بچی تھی سمجھ گئی امام حسین سے کہنے لگی اے چچا جان آپ میرے ساتھ ایسے برتاؤ کرتے ہیں جیسے یتیموں کے ساتھ برتاؤ کیا جاتا ہے آیا میرے بابا خیریت سے تو ہے بس یہ سننا تھا میرے مولا نے فرمایا اے بیٹا ابھی تک مستقیمن دیکھو امام کتنا اکرام کرتے ہیں کتنی عزت کرتے ہیں یتیموں کی امام حسین نہیں کہتے کہ تمہارا بابا کو شہید کیا گیا امام حسین فرماتے اے بیٹا رکیا اب سے مجھے بابا بھلانا بس بیٹی سمجھ گئی کہ میں یتیمہ ہو گئی اس کے بعد میرے مولا نے سکینہ سے کہا اے سکینہ آؤ تمہارے نئے گوشوارے رکیہ کو دو میں کہوں گا اے میرے مولا بہت خیال تھا رکیہ کا یہاں پہ تو آپ اپنی بیٹی بیٹی سے کہتے ہیں کہ نئے غوشوار یتیم کو دیا جائے لیکن شام غریبہ ہوگی وہاں پہ تو خیمے جلا دیے جائیں گے سکینہ کو تو کوئی نہیں ہوگا جو دست شفقت پھرائے سر پر وہاں پہ تو شمر کے تماشے ہوں گے شام غریبہ میں وہاں پہ کوئی نہیں ہوگا جو کہے کہ سکینہ کو نئے غوشوار دیے جائے اللہ لعنت اللہ للقوم الظالمین